Hello, welcome back. This is Josh Patel, and today I'm bringing you another excellent biology lesson. Today we will be doing Chapter 5, which is all about cell growth and division, Lesson 5, which is all about multicellular life. And this is the last ch lesson for Chapter 5, so congratulations for finishing it. So our key concept today is cells work together to carry out complex functions. And this makes sense that cells work together because everything basically in life works together. We have to work with coworkers at work. We have to work with students at school. Everything works together to make life perfect. So multicellular organisms depend on interactions among different cell types. So as we already know, there are many different types of cells because there are many different functions to be performed. So some different types of cells could be like red blood cells, white blood cells, tissue or skin cells, heart cells, and the list goes on and on. So we can classify cells into many different groupings or like there's a hierarchy, I guess you could say, of how we classify them. So the basic unit is a cell. That's the basic unit of life. And then if we go up a step, we go to tissues, which are groups of cells that perform a similar function. So that means a tissue must be a group of cells and they like combine or the cells work together to perform, to perform a similar task. And then with multiple tissues, we get an organ. And an organ is a group of tissues that perform a specific or related function. So basically, it's we start out with a cell Multiple cells together form tissues, and multiple tissues together form organs. And multiple organs together form organ systems, which are groups of organs that carry out similar functions. And this is pretty easy to remember because in organ system, it says organ system, so they must be a group of organs. So let's go over this one more time. We start with cells. Cells form tissues, tissues form organs, and organs form organ systems. This is a major concept in biology that we need to remember. And then one thing they forgot in this PowerPoint slide is that organ systems form organisms. So me, you, other animals are organisms, and all our organ systems inside us form us. So if we go through this with an example, let's go with a heart. So we have heart cells and heart cells form heart tissues. And these tissues form to make the heart, which is the organ. And then the heart is involved with an organ system. And the heart is involved in multiple because it's like the center of everything. And one is the cardiovascular system, which pumps blood through the body. So the heart is in that organ system and that organ system is inside us so we're the organism that contains the organ system so this is an image this is one cell and as you can see multiple cells form the tissue and then multiple tissues form like an organ which would be the roots so the, this is a system so there's a root system and there's also a shoot system for plants so that would be the organ system so special, specialized cells perform specific functions. Cells develop into their mature form through the process of cell differentiation. So cells differ because the different combinations of genes are expressed. So all cells are unique. Well, all types of cells are unique because they have different genes that tell them to do different tasks. So a cell's location in an embryo helps determine how it will differentiate. So as we know, the embryo is like one of the beginning stages of life where a baby's turning into a fully developed baby that can come out. So it's saying the location of the cell in the embryo chooses how it differentiates and what it becomes. So down here, it's saying the outer layer which is called the ectoderm, produces skin cells. And the middle layer, which is called the mesoderm, produces bone cells. And the interior, interior layer, which is called the endoderm, 
produces intestines or digestive organs. We don't have to know the special words for each of the sides, or we don't need to particularly know that the outer produces skin cells. Just know that the place in the embryo chooses or determines which type of cell they will become. Because we will learn all this fun stuff later in one of the final chapters in biology. So stem cells are unique body cells. Stem cells have the ability to divide and renew themselves, remain undifferentiated in form, and develop into a variety of specialized cell types. So basically a stem cell is what we find in embryos and they are the like the very beginning and they choose what they become. So a stem cell can become a skin cell, it can become a heart cell, it, become, it can become a blood cell. So it chooses what it basically becomes. So it's just saying a stem cell can either become two new stem cells or one new stem cell plus a specialized cell which would be like a heart cell or a blood cell. So they're classified into three types but we don't need to know this and it's just too in depth for regular biology. So we'll just skip over that. So stem cells come from adults and embryos. So adult stem cells can be hard to isolate and grow. The use of adult stem cells may prevent transplant rejection. The use of embryonic stem cells raise ethical issues. And embryonic stem cells are pluripotent and can grow indefinitely in culture. So this is just one of the one of the types of stem cells which was on the last slide which we don't need to know of. So embryos are basically before the baby's born and they contain stem cells which are very good for scientists to use because they can grow them in cultures and make different types of cells which will help in the medical field greatly but adult stem cells are hard to use so we can't really use them as well but the bad thing about using embryonic stem cells are it raises ethical issues because it's kind of like killing a baby because you have birth to an embryo which can't grow or the scientists will use in these cultures which is like doing experiments on humans so it's not ethically right but it would help tremendously for doctors to perform certain tasks so first an egg is fertilized by a sperm cell in a petri dish which is right here and the eggs divide forming an inner cell mass these cells are the are then removed and grown within nutrients and science tried to control how the cell specializes by adding or removing certain molecules. So they'll basically take these stem cells and like grow them in a lab to, to grow into certain types of cells. Like they, if they want to make muscle cells or neurons, which are brain cells or red blood cells. And this will help doctors in certain fields of medicine. So the use of stem cells offers many currently realized in potential benefits. So stem cells are used to treat leukemia and lymphoma, which is a type of blood disease or leukemia is producing too much red blood cells or white blood cells. And then stem cells may cure disease or replace damaged organs. So let's say if we have a damaged muscle cell and it won't grow back, we can use stem cells to like mimic or grow new muscle cells. Stem cells may revolutionize the drug development process. So it'll help us find more information about drugs and help develop them easier. So that's the end of chapter five, which was all about cell growth innovation. It's the last video in chapter five. And next time we'll be starting chapter six, which is all about meiosis and Mendel and meiosis is basically the one something closely closely related to mitosis which we already learned about so if you miss anything in this video or don't understand it make sure you go back review it or check in your textbook and hopefully you finally get everything and good luck in your quest in biology